Okay, we're gonna be looking at muscles and specifically what muscles are actually made of and how it helps us to actually move our body. I mean, every type of movement that we're trying to make with our biceps, biceps or triceps or any kind of movement involves muscles pulling and pushing with various forces around our particular body. So uh, <clears throat> if you're looking at this man right here, flexing his biceps right here, you'll notice that these particular structures that help us move our bones have to be very uh, dynamic. They have to be able to stretch, elongate, and actually become shorter. And uh, every one of these, as they contract, helps to pull something in. But in order to bring it back out, you have another set of muscles on the other side, antagonistic muscles. For every small movement in one direction, there's a set of muscles that does it in the opposite direction. Same thing happens with uh, breathing, for example. You have your external intercostal muscles versus your internal intercostal muscles, and they work against each other by one set helps to actually bring your lungs out to help you inhale, and then the other helps to move, bring your rib cage back down to help you exhale. Well, every one of these types of uh, skeletal muscle is made up of a bundle of muscle fibers, and uh, there's tons of these in here, and these muscle fibers can be stretched out, and each one is actually called a myofibril, and these particular cells are actually very long, elongated cells that are multinucleate, which means each one can have more than one nucleus. It's kind of one of the exceptions to the cell theory. And if you actually look at some of these myofibrils in detail under a microscope, you can actually see dark and light bands, and we're gonna be talking about that in a little bit. And those dark and light bands are made up of two specific types of protein, uh, filament proteins, long chain proteins called actin and myosin. You may have heard of this before. And how this basically works, we're gonna see this in a little bit in the, with the details, is that these fibers can slide along each other and uh, that actually helps to create the movement. And obviously, in order to move your muscles, you need a lot of energy. And so ATP is very, very important in here. We'd also expect to find a lot of mitochondria present. Another thing about structure related to function. So we're gonna see this a little bit later. So a few things to pay attention to are, what I mentioned before, muscle fibers are multinucleate. Oops. Um, each of these fibers contains myofibrils, which I've mentioned up here. The myofibrils have these repeating units of light and dark bands, and we're going to see them in a second, but we call them sarcomeres. So some people, you could say that a sarcomere is basically the functional unit, the functional unit. And uh, just as with all scientific phenomena, scientists, people documenting this stuff, have tried to make things easier for us to understand so that future scientists studying physiology can identify the same things. And so uh, this repeating unit called the sarcomere was recognized. You'll see it like this. We're gonna name all these different parts um, in a moment. And these repeating sarcomeres with these light and dark bands based on how overlapped these filaments are, make the muscle fibers look striped. And a fancy way to say striped is striated. And so we call it, we call these muscle fibers striated. And the striations are due to these overlapping actin and myosin filaments, which we'll see in more detail in a moment. There's a special type of endoplasmic reticulum called sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to play a, an important role in helping to send messages indicating when to actually cause muscle contraction. And calcium actually plays a big role in uh, un enabling our muscles to actually contract. So later on, you're going to see that calcium comes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it's surrounding these myofibrils. And of course, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of mitochondria to provide the ATP necessary for this kind of contraction. So take a look again, biceps, what's the antagonistic muscle to the biceps? It would be the, the triceps back here. If you break it all down and cut, it, cut, cut out all these pieces, you can see bundles of muscle fibers, and then each of these muscle fibers contains a lot of nuclei, basically. Okay, and then the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to be releasing the calcium to help give the instructions to tell these particular muscles to 
contract. So if we look specifically at one of these sarcomere units, you can see uh, the two types of fibers here, which we're going to point out. Uh, for now, all you got to know, one of them looks thinner, and so we call them, uh, well, the thin filament, and the one is the thick, the thicker filament. And the names of these two types of filaments are actin and myosin filaments. And these are the ones that will slide over each other in order to produce the effect of contracting muscles or expanding these muscles. And as I've mentioned previously, the ways that scientists try to communicate this with future scientists is to try to recognize places. And so they've given these names to particular bands, but the, the goal is just for you to be able to see uh, when muscle is actually contracted and when it's not contracted or when it's relaxed, basically. So these are the various bands. We have names for these. So this is called a sarcomere, and it goes from this line to this line. And this is actually pretty apparent under a, when you look at a electron microscope image as well too. So these are what are referred to as the Z lines. Um, the dark band will appear when you have all of these fibers, these filaments overlapping. So when you have actin and myosin closely overlapped, it appears darker under a microscope. And when there are only actin filaments and there's no myosin running in between them, uh, it appears as a lighter band. So this is how we designate these different areas of a sarcomere unit. But if you take a look actually at it, this is a really old image here, but it's pretty clear. You can see uh, where the darker bands are and where there are darker bands, where there are darker bands, that means there's actin and myosin kind of overlapping each other. Actin filaments only, it'll appear th more light because there's less fibers in that particular area. Uh, you could break it down further with I lines and H zones and A bands and sarcomy and uh, the, the other types of designations. But the point here is to see the distance between two of the Z lines and it gives you an idea of just how contracted the muscle actually is. Here are a couple other diagrams showing the same thing. You can tell immediately looking at this, the myosin filaments here, actin filaments Z line. And then you can actually see where the dark band would be and where the light band would be as well too. And think of this as being able to slide outwards. If these are able to, being able to slide outwards, uh, we're gonna see that in the next slide really quick. If you look at these two diagrams over here, can you tell which of these diagrams actually is showing contracted muscle and which one is showing relaxed muscle? And in these uh, electron micrographs, can you tell a difference as well too? Yes, you can. Well done. Fantastic. Check it out. Over here, uh, we have some light bands that are present. That means there are some actin filaments that are not overlapping with any myosin filaments. Over here, I don't see those light bands, which means that all the space that was in between the actin filaments is all filled up with the myosin filaments. So that looks something more like this compared to this. And you guessed it right. This is the diagram. These are the diagrams here that are showing muscle being contracted. And so um, I didn't have to actually use the A band, the whatever, all the different types of bands, the dark band. All I, I was just be able to look at this and be able to figure out that uh, if there are no spaces in between, I shouldn't see any light areas. And that means the muscles probably contracted. So this man is the middle in the middle of a big uh, biceps flex. And then when he actually extends his arm out, with the help of the triceps, it might look something more like this. His biceps would be relaxed. Okay, next in the last video, we're gonna be looking at specifically how the myosin heads and the actin filaments actually interact with ATP in order to help bring about muscle contraction.